Father, we just thank you for this day, Lord, and I thank you for the time of worship that we had to be able to just experience an atmosphere of your presence. And Lord God, your word says that as your word goes forth, it will bear fruit. And so, Lord, as we spend time in your word, as we allow your word to, to permeate our souls and our hearts our, and even our bodies, Lord God, that we would be changed into the image and likeness of Jesus. I thank you, Lord, for what you're going to do in advance, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. It's good to be with you here this morning. You know, I had a plan. Uh, we were going to be starting a series, and I was really excited about that series. I had it all laid out, and uh, as the week began to unfold, the Lord just said, that's a really nice series, but you're not going to do that right now. And so I'm, okay. And so I've learned that when we deviate, when I deviate to do what God wants to do, supernatural things happen. And I want to encourage you that the same thing happens for you in your life. If you've got a plan, you should have a plan. Your life should be full of plans. You should wake up in the morning and say, look, this is what I'm planning on doing. If, if you wake up aimlessly, guess how much you will get done? Nothing. And the day will be here and be gone, and that time can no longer be grasped. Listen, that's one of the gifts that we have. One of the only things that we have as a gift to the Lord is our time. Amen? And so I encourage you, be a planner. It's good to plan. Having said that, don't become so narrow-minded and so fixated that when the Holy Spirit knocks on your shoulder and says, hey, I'd like you to do this or that, say, no, no, sorry, Jesus, I got a plan. No, no, no. Your plan should be his plan. So, so when he asks you to, to do something, then you need to lay your plans aside. And here's what I found out is that when you do that, whatever you had planned to get done, somehow miraculously, whether that day or the next day or the next week, would somehow get done in an expedited way. I can't explain it, but God doesn't operate in our time. He just does that. And so we need to be open to that. Amen. All that was free. wasn't planning on talking about that. I want to talk about something that's really, really important, near and dear to my heart, especially as a pastor. And I can tell you right now, before I even say the title, it affects each and every one of us, either directly or indirectly in our lives. So here, here it is. This is the title. Is healing for today? So there it is. Is healing for today? Now, the short answer is yes, isn't it? Now, the longer answer is Yes, but, you know, because we, we, you know, here's the reality of it. We look at God's Word, and we're going to be looking at Scripture, and it very clearly demonstrates that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever, that God is a healing God, all right? There's, there's no ifs and maybes or buts about that. Yet in our human experience, that's what the Word says, but in our human experience, we either have known someone that is suffering right at this very moment with some health issue of some sort, maybe we're suffering with some kind of health issue of some sort, whether something external that people can see, or whether internal broken heart issues, broken mind issues that maybe is, is a little harder to see. But regardless of that, there's not a person here that hasn't been affected or is being affected by some type of illness at this very moment. And yet we see in God's Word that it says that God is a healer. So it would appear that there's like this disconnect that's happening, right? Like, like God, why? And so, having said that, here's what happens in Christendom, and when I say that, in the church worldwide. You have then different camps of people. Because of their experience of God not doing anything in their lives, or they're not perceiving anything. In other words, God hasn't healed so-and-so when they prayed for them, or, or this or that. Then here's what's happened. They actually teach and believe that God doesn't heal anymore. Literally whole camps of people. And, and, and here's the thing, that's a lie from the pit of hell. When are we supposed to be following our experiences more than the Word of God? Holy moly. Come on now, you know what I'm saying? Then you have other groups that, that are kind of in the middle. I call them kind of like in the middle. And, and their attitude is, well, yes, God does heal today, but, and they're the but people. You know, but if it's the Lord's will, but if it's this, if it's that, the buts, 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 buts. Listen, we're not called to be goats. Goats, but. We're called to be lambs, to be sheep, all right? And we don't but. We got to take the buts out. We have to say, this is what God's word says. Now, yes, my experience may be different, but who are we to follow? Our experience or follow the Lord Jesus Christ? And let me just say something, and this is really important, because so many people over the years have come up to me, and they say, I hear what you're saying, but. And then they'll talk about, look, and I've never experienced a healing in my life. And, you know, this happened and that happened. They tell me their sad story. And it's sad. And, and listen to me, I'm, I, I feel for them. 
And then I say to them, I say, well, hold it. You know, is Jesus your, your Savior? And, and they're like, well, well, yes. So then I begin to tell them my story. And I say, well, look, at you know, the whole earth is under this huge plague. It's been exposed to something. And that every person, unless there's a cure for them, are going to die. And that sickness is sin. And unless the cure, unless you take the cure, which is Jesus' blood, you will die in your sin. You will die of the worst sickness ever. And here's what they say, oh, yeah, yeah, well, of course. You know, they, they go, well, well, yeah, okay, I realize that. that yes, uh, Jesus has saved me. Well, here's the thing. Sin is a sickness. So then why would we compare being saved eternally, having a new heart put into your body? What an amazing miracle to happen. Why would we separate that from an eyesight issue or a leg issue or a liver issue or a kidney issue? Why would we separate that? And we shouldn't. We shouldn't. It's all the same to God. And so let me just show you a scripture. It's, it's amazing. It's in the Old Testament. And, and here's the thing. It's Psalms 107 verse 20. This is God speaking. And he says this, I sent forth my word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Now just, just look at this scripture. Let this thing sink into you. First of all, this is Old Testament. This is God speaking under the Old Covenant. And we're under what? A better covenant with better promises. And yet here he's saying this under the Old Covenant. He says he sent forth so that he is God, all right? He sent forth his word. Now I love this. The word word there. It doesn't just mean the written word. Actually, when, when translated and extrapolated, it actually compares to the New Testament word rhema. It actually means spoken word. So it's not just the recorded word. It literally means what God has spoken over our lives. And so God sent his word. Now, here's the other thing. How did God send his word? Remember, this is Old Testament. How was God going to send his word? You turn to the Gospel of John. And it says this, the opening verses, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And then a few verses later, it says this, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. And so here we have Jesus, the living Word, and that's what was being prophesied way back. David could see into the Spirit, and he recorded this. You know, God sent Jesus. That's really what it says, all right? God sent Jesus and healed them. Now, I love this. This word healed is an Old Testament term, Rapha. And it's actually one of the names of God. You can actually say Jehovah Rapha, the God who heals us. And that word healed, you, it, it doesn't just mean to be saved. It means that. But it means to be cured, to be made whole by a physician. It literally means that. So it's not just talking about the spiritual healing from sin, but it also is talking about our physical healing of any ailment that we might have. Please do not put God in a box. God can do anything. Amen? And so here's the thing. We need to, as believers, begin to open our hearts to that. Listen to me. All of us have had some bad health experiences. Put your hand up if you had a bad health experience. All right. Everybody's hand went up here. Everybody's hand. I saw it. And so the point is, this is a thing that affects each and every one of us. It's very real. And a lot of pastors, a lot of ministries, here's what they do. They just don't talk about it. They talk about, well, look, you'll be healed in the by and by. Which is true. Listen, any ailment, any sickness you're dealing with now, I promise you, when you cross from this threshold to the other threshold of heaven, everything will be gone. You know, as far as any unhealthiness, in fact, any sin, any sickness, it's all gone, any wrong thinking. But here's the thing, I don't think we have to wait to heaven to receive some of heaven down here. In fact, it's our job as believers to bring heaven to earth. We are called to be conduits to bring the truth of the kingdom to this world. And so we need to be activating this in our lives. And so it goes on, it says, healed them and delivered them from their destructions. I love that, right? You know, God doesn't want us to be destroyed here in this earth. God doesn't want us to be beat down and beat up, but rather to stand up and be strong in the Lord. So I can't encourage you enough with this. So, so with this in mind, what are, what are some steps to receive healing? You know, if we believe that healing, healing is for today, how many people believe that? Okay, so then we have to look at Scripture. We need to look at the Word and say, well, how does this work? So I just want to give you some thoughts on this that in my life I've applied and I found, hey, it works, all right? So first one is this, what? Admit that you have a need. This is so important. I can't tell you, and people come into the church, you know, and, and they come in, they're in a wheelchair, their arms hanging, they're, they're limping. I'm like, hey, how are you today? 
I'm blessed and highly favored. I'm like, seriously? Like, seriously, you know what I'm saying? You know, I, I, I've, I've seen it, and that's literally what they say. In there. And so I'll say to them, but, but look, you know, I see your arms, like, hanging crooked. Like, you know, I, I see you're lame. You're like, and they're like, well, no, 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 I, I don't want to confess that. I don't want to confess that. I'm blessed and high. What the heck is wrong with you? You're dragging your leg like something is wrong with you. Like, why don't you just say, hey, I hurt my leg. I was, you know, I jumped out of my car, and I sprained my knee or whatever. But I'm believing for healing. I'm okay with that. But listen to me, you got to admit you got a problem. See, the Bible says this, and all who came to Jesus were healed. Well, think about this. If people didn't think they had a problem, would they have gone to Jesus? No. They would have just, oh, I, I'm blessed and highly favored. Uh, I'm okay. You know? And the, the reality of it is that they're not. So they did, they did what? They're sick. They had an issue, an illness. They went to Jesus. Now, you might think that's a silly first step. You know, keep those steps up, all right, until I, I finish going through them. You know, admitting, admitting that need is so, so important. And most people are afraid to, afraid or been under wrong teaching that they don't need to admit it. Listen, I could show you scripture after, I could spend the morning just talking about that part, admitting that you have a need. God, even God can't help you unless you're willing to say, Jesus, I need help. That's all, that's all. It's not admitting defeat. It's admitting that he's the king of kings and the Lord of lords, and you need him. That pleases him. All right? We need to go to him. All right. Step two, seek out Jesus first. So if you get past the first step of admitting you got a problem, for most people, not most, many people, the first thing they do is pick their telephone up or go on the internet to book a doctor's appointment. Now listen, I'm not anti-doctor. I want to tell you that right now. Listen, no, in fact, I don't want anyone to leave here to think that I said that. I'm not. What I'm saying is, when you come to the point of realizing you're ill, the first thing you do is hit your knees and say, Lord Jesus, this, this is what's going on. I got this pain. I got this going on in my life. You know, I, I have this, this mental issue that's going on. I, I feel self-destructive. Whatever it might be, the first thing you do is on your knees before the king, before the throne. Say, Lord, I've got a need. I, I, don't know, I don't know what to do here. Can you help me with this? And then immerse yourself in the word. Immerse yourself in the presence of God. Seeking his face to hear from him. This is just so important, all right? You need to do that. That's the first thing. You, you make the phone call to God first, all right? In other words, that's the first thing you do. And then in connection with that, and this is number three, you need to receive what Jesus says to you. Now, what if he says nothing? In other words, you, you, you sincerely admitted to the Lord, you went to prayer, you've done everything that, that you could possibly do, you sought him, and, and with sincerity of heart, you just didn't have a sense of, of anything from the throne room directly to you. So what do you think you should do next? Then you pick up your real telephone, and you call your doctor. And maybe Jesus might even tell you to do that. Funny story, I'll take a minute. Uh, I've told this story before, and for some of you, you're like, yeah, 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 but it fits this. I was part of a group of people that their teaching was you stand in faith. You got an illness, you just, by the stripes of Jesus, you've been healed, you just stand, and you'll be supernaturally healed, and, and all that. No really consulting with God, really. You just stand on the word. And so I had this tooth issue. I was on the road at the time with an evangelist, and for six months, I didn't sleep one night in its entirety. I paced almost every night for hours confessing the word, my mouth just aching and aching, just believing, because that was the camp that I was a part of at that time. That's, just, that's what you do, you know, and for six months. So I, I get off the road, you know, and I'm standing before my mirror one morning shaving, and I'm in agony. And I'm like, Lord, you know, this, this faith thing that I'm believing in, what, what I believe in, isn't working. And for the first time in this area, God began to speak to me. He says, son, how are you? And I'm like, Oh, I'm fine. And he said, you know, this is the first time that you've ever had a conversation with me about this. I'm like, what do you mean, Jesus? You know, I've, I've been confessing your word. I've been doing this. But he said, you've never asked me about it. You never asked me. You never consulted with me. You never spent time to, to just bring it before the throne to see what my specific will was for that specific circumstance. You see, we serve a living Jesus. We don't follow just, just the logos word that's written here. Listen, I can find scripture that says... Stand still and know that the Lord is there. And then I can turn the pages and find another spot that says, go forth. Well, that's opposite, isn't it? 
So if you're one of those people that flips through your Bible and just points your finger, you can find direction one way or the other, up or down. That's not how you follow Jesus. This is the basic instructions on how to live life. But for the specifics, when you're dealing with an illness, when you're dealing with something specific, you need to hear from him. So anyway, the conversation goes on. I'm in the mirror, you know, and, and I said, well, Lord, what should I do? You know what he said? Go to a dentist. He literally said that. So I, I make the appointment. I go to the dentist. So I'm sitting in the chair, and the guy's going, oh, oh, oh. And I was like, oh, this is not good. And here's what he said. He said, you know, if you had come six months ago, I could have saved this tooth. It was exactly six months in time that I was doing my stupid stuff. You get what I'm saying? Now, again, am I telling you that when you have a toothache, the first thing you do is call the dentist? No. Call on Jesus. It's still calling on him. But the thing is, Calling on him isn't telling him what to do. You see the difference? And that's where some people on the faith teaching have, have gotten a little off track a little bit. Listen, it's all about faith. Faith is the word trust. That's what it means. We need to trust in Jesus. But you can't just figure out what you want to do and say, well, God, this is what I'm believing for. No, it's Jesus. What do you want me to stand on? What word are you giving me right now to stand for this particular circumstance? And this doesn't just apply for healing. This applies to every step. Everything you do in your life needs to be organized that way. You can't just stand upon the Logos word, what's written. You stand upon the rhema, what has been spoken specifically to you for a specific time, for a specific event. And listen, if you haven't heard from God, let me tell you something. We live in a day and an age, if you honestly have sought God and sought Him and you're not hearing from Him, pick up the phone and call for help, all right? You need to do that. We, have, we live in a part of the world where we have access to amazing miracles that God has put here in our presence as far as God using doctors. Please do not dismiss doctors as a lack of faith in your life. In fact, I'm going to say something else, and some people aren't going to like this. Some people mask fear with this pseudo-faith thing. In other words, they're afraid to call the doctor because of what the doctor might say. So here's what they do. I'm believing. I'm believing. No, you're not. You're just scared to death. You're just scared to death to find out what might be going on. Let me tell you something. Don't operate in a spirit of fear. We operate in faith and trust in our King. Amen? So just to review those, those three things, you know, admit that you have a need. Second, seek out Jesus first. And third, receive what Jesus says to you. You know, and it's just so, so important. I, I can't, listen, I'm begging you to do this. I, I, I get the phone calls. I get the texts. I see the emails. You see, you got your little thing going on in your life. I get all of it. I get all of it. And, and when I say that, I don't mean that in a bad way, but, but I hear about it. And listen to me, I'm on my knees. I'm crying for many of you at different times because I see what you're going through. And I'm like, Jesus, please provide an answer for them. Show them what to do because they need your help. I'm begging the throne room on your behalf. And at times God tells me stuff and then I'll call or I'll text or I'll come and talk to you. At times he just says, just keep praying. But either way, let me tell you something. There's someone else who's doing a lot more intercession for you than me and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. The Bible says that he is your intercessor. And so he's the one, he's your advocate, he's your lawyer he's the one that you need to get in front of and say lord what do i do and you can see that every time that people came to the advocate to jesus you can read it in the word every time he met their need every single time so with that all in mind i want to share three don'ts if you're dealing with an illness this is really really important all right three don'ts so this is if you're dealing with something, all right? So here's the first one. Don't feel ashamed or condemned. You know, one of the worst things that can happen is that you you're, you're, you're feel sick and, and, and then you feel, oh, I must have done something wrong. This is God judging me. This is God. God has put this on me. Listen to me. That is old religious thinking. It's not of the spirit of the living God. Listen to me, illnesses come from all different places, all right? Some of it can be a genetic propensity, you know, some kind of chromosomal issue from, you know, way back in your past. You know, some of it could be uh, just you were in the wrong place at the wrong time and caught something from somebody. You get what I'm saying? So, so there's spiritual avenues it can come from. There's natural avenues it can come from. It really doesn't matter because Jesus is still the solution for all of it, Amen. 
And so I want you to realize that. But the point is, don't feel ashamed. Just say, look, this is what's going on. This is, I, I, I got to deal with this. What do I do? And then seek the Lord's face, all right? So don't let shame and guilt separate you. I, so often, you know, I, 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 I don't see someone at church for a little while or I don't hear from them. And then like a month later, I see them and I'm like, well, what happened? Oh, man, you know, I, I, this happened to me. I, I had this happen. I got sick. And, and so, and I'm like, well, why didn't you come to church? Why didn't you call me? And I, I just felt so ashamed. I felt like I was being judged by God. And I'm like, oh. That's not the heart of Jesus. Listen to me. If you've got a problem, you better, just as Donnie was talking about, you've got a problem, you better run to the throne room. Don't run away. Run to him. He wants to help you. Amen. So don't feel ashamed or condemned. Next one. Don't feel that God doesn't care or love you. Oh, this is another one, right? You know, God must not love me because this is happening to me. Again, that, that sense of, of that shame and guilt connected with that, then you start to feel unloved. And then your head just gets lower and lower, doesn't it? I've been there. How many people are, know what I'm talking about? These things I'm describing. You felt those things. I, I'm with you. I felt these things. There have been times, like, you know, even, even I've been here for 30 years. So listen, I've had my ups, my downs, some sicknesses, different things going on. And, and here's the thing. I got to put on a bold face. So I, there were times where I, I am dealing with ailments. I remember once I was in an accident where, where a guy ran into me. I was playing baseball. A guy broke a bunch of ribs on the side of me with his shoulder. I was catching a fly ball, and he thought I was going to miss it. What a jerk. And he ran into me, and, and I caught the ball still, still held on to the ball, but he took out a bunch of my ribs. So for, for about three months, I was just in agony. Probably none of you knew anything about it. I just moved a little slower, <laughs> a little carefuler, didn't laugh too much. Uh, but the point is, you know, so I've dealt with things like that, other things, you know, where Sandra was dealing with some things. And, and it's like, man, I know what it's like to deal with these things. But here's the thing. I made a covenant with the Lord that no matter what is going on, I know that you love me, Jesus, and you've got a plan. Do not let sickness separate you from the love of God. Paul said that, the end of Romans 8, and you can read it. You know, neither life, nor death, nor angels, nor demons, nor anything in all creation, created or, or in, in the eternals, can separate you from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus. Don't be separated because of an illness in your life. And, and that brings me to the third thing. Don't feel that God cannot use you. That's another one. You know, well, okay, because I have this illness, there's no way, I, I, I'm, I'm a defect so therefore, how could I ever pray for anyone else to be healed? How, how can I uh, feel, you know, that, that I'm worthy? It's not about your worthiness. Pfft, come on. You're a conduit for Jesus to flow through. You know, I've seen lots of broken, leaking water pipes that aren't in very good condition, yet water still goes through it, right? And that's how you have to feel sometimes, is that we're a little leaky, you know, we, got, we may have some issues in, in, in our plumbing, but the Holy Spirit can still flow in and through us. And that's how you need to look at it. You know, so when I'm praying for people, there were times, you know, all kinds, of, like I say, sickness in my life, and I'm praying, and God still does a miracle. And he got more glory for it, because I knew it definitely wasn't me. Because I was seeking him still, saying, God, you know, I don't know what to do here. And God just used me. He'll do the same for you. Don't be ashamed or feel guilty or feel unworthy to be used. Because if that be true, none of us here are perfect. None of us. So that would mean that none of us are worthy to be used by God. We might as well just pack up and go home, right? But God says, God says, and that's why we need to continue to just pray for people, love on people, receive his love for ourselves. Amen? Okay. Leads me to my last couple of points. How can you minister to someone dealing with an illness? So I've talked about how, you know, the don'ts for you, but what about the people around you? What should be our attitude? Let me share a scripture with you that really encapsulates this. Galatians 6 verse 2, Amplify. Carry one another's burdens... And in this way, you will fulfill the requirements of the law. That is the law of Christian love. Wow. Can you put that scripture up? Do we have it? We should have it. I need you to look at that. Yeah, look at that. Carry one another's burdens. That literally means to carry it like literally if they had a stack of books, to take their books from them and carry them. But, but this is talking about carrying their burdens. In other words, if someone around you is dealing with a sickness, dealing with an illness, that literally you come alongside of them and you're there to help them carry that weight. And it's interesting that word burden can actually mean the word authority. 
So here's the thing. There's sometimes when we're dealing with an illness, a sickness, that we don't realize the authority we have to overcome it. In other words, we did, we're, we're, we're just so low. And we're like, Lord, I just, I, I, just, I just can't do this. The idea is that others come alongside and they help lift up that authority of the name of Jesus so that healing can happen. It says, in this way, you fulfill the requirements of the law of Christ. That is the law of Christian love. In other words, none of us, when we see a person that's ill, whether internally or externally, should judge that person. Because guess what? Except by the grace of God, that could be you. That's step one. The other thing is to realize that that person is not lower than you. Just because you happen to you know, be a healthier person, maybe, you know, whatever, genetically or, or whatever, you don't have any right to say, well, oh, I'm, I'm better than that person. Now, nobody here is going to think that on the outside. But your actions may dictate that. I'm going to say something, it's probably in my notes somewhere, but I'm going to say this right now. One of the worst things that you can say to a person dealing with an illness is this, you just need more faith. How many people have heard that said? You might as well just say, let me, let me translate that for you, for that person that's hearing that. Let me, let me just translate that for you. You're not good enough to be healed. That's how it gets translated. That's what's heard. And that's why we should never make statements like that. You just need more faith. If I hear somebody hear, say that to somebody, I'll slap you. I will. Because that's, that's a wrong attitude. Well, maybe my attitude's wrong too, but I'll stand before God and I'll deal with that. But the point is, that should not be the first thing out of your mouth. It should be to come alongside that brother or sister and say, here, let me stand in faith with you. And let's just see how strong your faith is. You know, you might be thinking to myself, oh, maybe I don't have a whole lot of faith. So the point is, do not say that to anyone. Come alongside of them. And so let me just give you some thoughts on, on how that looks, okay? So the first thing is, you know, come alongside in compassionate love and support. Just be there for them. Don't, don't, you know, don't be the answer man or the answer woman. Well, Scripture says this and Scripture says that. There may be a time and a place for that. But right now, they're just hurting. They might be hurting emotionally, physically. They just need a friend to come alongside them and say, I'm with you. You know, it might be a text, it may be a phone call, it may be an email, it may be visiting them, whatever it might be. Just be there for them. Show them that you care. Sometimes that's what the enemy is doing is they separate the sick, right? That, that's what the enemy does, separates the sick and the hurting so that they might be destroyed. So they need to know they're part of the flock. They need to know they're still loved for and cared for, amen? That, anyone here can do that. We can do this. In other words, do to them what you would want. Would you want... Someone to come when you're, you're at a low point in your life and say, well, you just need more faith, brother. Or you just need more faith, sister. You don't want to hear that. You need to want to hear someone say, look, I'm here for you. I'm here with you. And don't even pretend. If you don't have the answer, don't try to, you know, do the shotgun approach. You know, well, the word says it. The word says that. And you're throwing out all this. Stop. If you've heard a word from the Lord, great. Share it. But don't just start throwing scriptures in their face. Just come alongside. Just be there for them. That means so much. So much. All right. Next one. Be willing to take time to hear their story. You know, so often we've had things happen in our life and we've got maybe delivered from something, healed from something, and so we see someone that looks like they're in the same position. And we're like, well, just do this. I did it and was instantly healed. Well, maybe, maybe, maybe not. Maybe though they have the same symptoms, it may be a different root cause. So just because it worked for you doesn't mean it'll work for them. You've got to hear from Jesus. Remember, that goes right back to what I was saying earlier. You have to hear from Jesus. So just be there. Listen to their story. Be sympathetic. And not like, yeah, yeah, you know, where you're patting them. You're like, oh, they're almost done. This. I'm not saying to be like, but I mean to truly have a heart of compassion, to just hear them, to sit and, and just hear them. Because out of that, as they're speaking, I've seen over and over again where well, the Holy Spirit will speak to me and say, this is what you need to share with them. But don't interrupt them. Let them finish their story. Now, I was guilty of this. In the early years, you know, people come up for prayer, and, and they'd start telling me, this, All right, yeah, it just, and I wouldn't say this, but basically, shut up, shut up. Okay, yeah, we're going to pray. You know, and the thing is, that was the wrong spirit, the wrong heart back in those days. It just wasn't right. It was part of the environment that I was brought up in in those early years. But that is not the spirit of Jesus. As I look at Scripture, at the Gospels, people came to him, they Listen, he only had three and a half years and he was going to die. Yet he still took the time to hear everyone's story. How much more should we be listening 
to what's going on, then prayerfully considering it, and then walking together with that individual. Amen? Okay. Final one. Pray with them, asking the Lord for wisdom and help to navigate them to their healing, to that place of healing. That's what it's about. And so that may mean, in the authority of the name of Jesus, speaking healing over that person. It may mean that that person needs to repent of something. Do you know that sin can often lead to physical and mental illness? Whatever it might be, whatever the issue is, God wants to be a part of the solution. In fact, without Him, you can't do anything. Remember, we're just conduits. So we're going to do the Bible today. What do I mean by that? Well, the Bible gives us instructions on how to pray for the sick, doesn't it? So I'm going to ask the music team to come up. We're going to be having a little bit of some background worship as that's going on. But let me just share this last scripture with you that tells us what we're going to do. And it's found in James chapter 5, verse 14 and 15. And it says this, Is anyone among you sick? Let him call the elders of the church to pray over them and anoint them with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered by faith or offered in faith, will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise them up. If they have sinned, they will be forgiven. There it is. It is right there. It, it, it doesn't get any clearer on direction for what we should do. So we have some elders that are here in the church, but the word elder, you know, we have five elders that truly have the title elder. But when you study the word elder, it just means senior leaders in the church. In other words, just leaders in the church. You notice it doesn't say perfectly healthy leaders. You know, and it, that, that doesn't matter. Okay, please. In fact, if you're one of the leaders here at Reach Out and you're dealing with an illness, I encourage you, pray for others, but then get prayed for too, all right? We're all in this together. Can't encourage you enough with that. Please put that scripture back up again. Just look at this again. I don't, you need to soak this scripture a little bit more. Call upon it. Anoint them with oil. So we got, we went to, I don't know, one of the Hobby Lobby or someplace, and we got these little, little bottles, and we put olive oil in them, so we got a bunch of them up here for the leaders to be able to grab. Now listen to me. I'm going to say something. A little dab will do you. I've been in places where, you know, the guy dumps a gallon of oil on his hand, puts it all over you, all over your clothes. Your clothes are trashed forever. You know, the oil's running down your neck. And it's like, oh, you feel like this grease ball. Listen to me. A little dab, just a little bit on your finger, just a little bit. You know, and, and please, don't touch clothes, and touch forehead or, or hand, something like that. See, it's symbolic. It's not that oil. That all, we did pray over the oil. I want to assure you we did. But let me tell you something. That's symbolic, in fact, of the song they're going to sing symbolic of the work of the Holy Spirit. It's the Spirit of God that brings healing. Amen? And what did I say? We're just conduits for God to work through. And, and what, what is the response to that? Anoint with oil in the name of the Lord, and the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. That's what it says. So we're going to do the word today. So let's stand all together. So just some instructions. We're going to begin to, they're going to just play in the background and sing a song. But for those that would like prayer, I need you just to stay where you are. And the reason is we're going to get packed up here really quickly. So if you want prayer for healing, it's very simple. Just put your hand up, okay? All right. So you see all those hands. Okay. You can put your hand down for this moment. But in a moment, I'm going to say put your hand back up again so that those who are the leaders in the church can find you and pray for you. Do not leave this place without getting prayer because it would be shame on you. We're providing an environment here for the presence of God to bring healing. Take it. It's free. There's more than enough for everyone, all right? So if you're a leader here, you may have brought your own oil. So I encourage you, uh, you can just start to pray for people. If you don't have your own oil, we have some. Jonathan is there, and he'll hand it out to you. You might want to grab a Kleenex just to have with you as well. So again, if you need healing, put your hand up and keep it up now. Just keep your hand up. And people will come to you, all right? So there's two groups of people here. There are those that need healing. There are those who need to pray for people. So I encourage you, if you see that some people are being prayed for, go stand with them. Just agree with that leader, all right? Don't be alone here in this place. There's no need to be. Come on now, look around. You see a person in need. You see prayer happening. Join with them. See God. Be a part of what God's doing right now. 
Hands up. I see hands up everywhere, so make sure everyone's needs get met. John, go ahead. You can just pray for people. All right. Thank you, Lord. Don't leave this place without being touched by Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
Father, we thank you for touching all those here in the sanctuary, all through this room, Lord God. Sweet prayers being offered up to you, Lord God, and you rewarding each one for their faith, Lord God, as they trust in you and trust in your word. The Lord God, they're receiving your healing right now. We just thank you, Lord God, for that. For those being prayed for, if you're still being prayed for, just stay there. That's all good. But Father, right now, I thank you for those that came here this morning. And I pray that what I shared, Lord God, that which was of you would go deep within the hearts of every believer, that they would receive it and walk in it. Anything that's not of you, Lord God, would just die. We just thank you, Lord, that your word is alive and active. And Lord, we just thank you for that. So bless each one, Lord, as they go forth from this place, walking out their healing in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you this morning. I am so glad that you were able to join with us today. I hope the message blessed you. If you'd like to connect with us more or learn more about us, you can go to reachoutchurch.com. Uh, if you have any prayer requests, we would love to pray with you. You can get hold of us at 845-218-7770. We are here for you. And uh, if you're in the area, please come and visit us at our services. We would love to see you there. God bless you.